Sunday. It must be Sunday dinner with Chef Joe. Hey everybody and welcome to another beautiful day here in Massachusetts. But of course you can't tell because we're inside. Two Sundays out from Thanksgiving. So I thought what a better way to do our show but to get you guys ready for Thanksgiving. So today we're going to work on appetizers. Our next week's show, we're going to work on uh, side dishes and dessert. All right, I'm feeling a little, I'm feeling a little, a little off right now. So I think it must be time for what's Joe drinking? That's right. Now today, Joe is drinking. This is amazing. Okay, so my buddy Reggie gave me this. This is a black ice rum. It is from Cape, the Cape Verdean Islands. It is a black rum, and it is brand new to the United States. This literally came straight over from the Cape Verdean Islands, and uh, this rum is real. I can't wait to try this. This rum is so, I've heard nothing but fantastic things about it. So hold on. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. You're, I get the molasses. I'm getting some like other like flavors in there. I'm getting some sweetness. Oh my God, this is like candy, seriously. Oh wow. Anyways, the first thing we're going to make today is a baked brie. Baked brie is uh, a staple at my family uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas. And so we're going to make a baked brie today. Uh, I'm gonna show you how simple it is. So we're gonna start off, we have here, a brie. So you could use any kind of brie you want. Um, it depends on what kind of brie you like. This actually is a can camembert, uh, which is a French, uh, a traditional French brie. Uh, the real big difference between camembert and uh, regular brie really is the flavor. Uh, this stuff has a lot of, it's very strong. You know when you say those smelly cheeses? Camembert is one of those smelly cheeses. We're going to get, we have a puff pastry, all right? These are puff pastry sheets. You can buy them in any grocery store, okay? The thing we want to do is we always want to put some kind of, of jam or marmalade or something like that on it. And since we're doing Thanksgiving, what's better than like some kind of cranberry, right? Well, it just so happens that I have some cranberry, orange cranberry marmalade or jam, sorry. And we're going to put that on over the top of it. We got you put that on top, and that's about maybe a, two tablespoons of uh, jam. Put any kind you want. At Christmas time, we usually do fig, uh, so that's what we do on that time. Now we're going to need to close it up, but what we're going to do is first is we're going to take the side that has the jam on it, and we're going to flip that over onto the puff pastry. Okay. Now, what we're gonna do from this point is we need to seal up our puff pastry. So I always like to use the, the tin, the, the paper, the kind of whatever, I don't know, what is this made of? Like some kind of uh, wood or something. But uh, I like to use a little corner of it to use that as a marker to, because what I'm gonna show you, what I, I like to do with it is, is you wanna make sure you get the puff pastry over the top of your cheese. So I go over here to the two corners and I cut them, I cut out a little half a moon or a half circle from each one and put that on there just like that. And that, that guarantees that we're going to do it. Now, from that point on, we're going to just seal up our puff pastry just like this. And again, you can trim it even more if you want, but listen. Who doesn't like puff pastry? So why would you trim it? The more the bread, the, bear, the better. Yeah, I see it, I see it. I have an assistant here doing my <laughs> camera angle telling me what I'm missing. All right, once we get it like that, you wanna flip it back over, okay? Right, looks pretty good. Now, you wanna add a, an egg wash to it. So all I did, this is, all this is, is one beaten egg with about a tablespoon of cold water. And you're just going to brush your 
all your dough. You're going to puff your pastry just like that. Make sure you want you want to try to get it all because what you don't want is you don't want to miss a spot and then it doesn't look as nice and shiny and pretty. All right, put that in a 375 degree oven for 30 minutes. All right, so we got that. All right, the next thing we're going to work on is our meatball. So we're making a cranberry meatball. And you're like, cranberry meatballs? And I'm like, yeah, cranberry meatballs. Now, what it calls for is two pounds of ground beef. But what we're going to do is you can make it vegetarian if you want. And some people are like, why? And other people are like, cool. Well, we're, we're eating in our house a little healthier these days. So, and I've been using a lot more plant-based uh, faux meats, as they're called. So we're going to use, I'm using two pounds today of Beyond Meat or from Beyond Burgers. Okay, so that's what this is. This is the Beyond, all right? And then in there, I've added two, two eggs. A third of a cup of dry bread crumbs, uh, a teaspoon of salt, uh, a te half a teaspoon of pepper, half a teaspoon of garlic powder, half a teaspoon of onion powder, and a half a teaspoon of thyme. And we're going to literally just mix this all up. This is a, what they call a Dutch oven, uh, and we're going to put in uh, maybe about a tablespoon or two of olive oil. It's, I've got it heated up right now. So what you want to do is, you can make them any size you want. So, you know, if you want to make them more cocktail size, which is probably what you want, you, uh, you're you just going to make them into a ball. It's probably better if I don't use the glove. All right, so turn this down a little bit, and then we're going to just sear them in our pan. Just like that. Can you get it in there? Let's see what it looks like. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to sear them in the pan just like that. Just eat this All right, so as you can see, we're we're just browning them. You can see the browning. Can you getting the browning in there at all? Oh yeah, there we go. Some nice browning happening. Beautiful. And start working on. Let's start working on our. Uh, Eggplant and red pepper dip. So, we're go we're working with, we have one eggplant and we have one red pepper. What I did with these is I took a fork and I poked holes all the way around them. And I then I, then I brushed some olive oil on them. And I put them on a pan in the oven uh, at 375, the same pre 375 oven, for uh, about 45 minutes. And then I put, when they were done, I put them in this bowl and I, and I put plastic wrap on them to cool. And this is what they look like when they're done. All right, so this has been roasting for 45 minutes in the oven. So from that, now we're going to get, let me grab another cutting board. All right. So what we're going to do now with this is we're going to take this out and we're going to cut off the, we're going to take out all the guts of the pepper and of the, uh, of the eggplant, okay? So we want to get rid of all the seeds, we don't want the seeds in there, okay? And, but we're going to keep the rest of it, so we're going to take, we want, we want the flesh, alright? We definitely want the flesh. Now. Look what's great about when you put plastic wrap over it, is you can also get the skin to peel right off of your pepper so that your pepper, our pepper dip is not, our eggplant pepper dip won't have as much that skin all over it. All right, so I'm just put, peeling that right off. You can use a towel if you like to help peel it off. All right. And look at that, it just peels right off, it's great. Okay, one more, one more. All right, so we're gonna just take this stuff and we're gonna, we don't need this anymore, so we're gonna get rid of that. All right, and then we're gonna grab our eggplant and we're going to cut the top off 
and we're going to cut the bottom off and then we're going to cut it lengthwise just like that all right and then we are going to scoop out the uh, the the middle all right, let me let me put, look at all the, the the liquid that came out of that when they were cooling all right so we are going to scoop all this out now just like this scooping it right out Okay, this is the best part of the eggplant, as we all know. So you want to get as much of it as you can. We don't need the skin. Okay. Just like that. And then, we're not done. Let me go back and make sure my meatballs don't burn up. I have a plate for my meatballs. Alright, let's grab a plate to take these meatballs off real quick. Alright, we're going to take these out now. So these have all browned up. What we're going to do now with this is, we're going to take this out and we're going to cut off the, we're going to take out all the guts of the pepper and of the, uh, of the eggplant, okay? So we want to get rid of all the seeds. We don't want the seeds in there. Just like this, scooping it right out. Okay, this is the best part of the eggplant, as we all know. So you want to get as much of it as you can. We don't need the skin. Just like that. And then, we're not done. Let me go back and make sure my meatballs don't burn up. I have a plate for my meatballs. Alright, let's grab a plate to take these meatballs off real quick. Take these out now. So these have all browned up, as you can see, for the most part. But that's okay, because we're not done cooking yet. Alright. So we're going to let those cool for a minute while we go back to our... Um, let me go back to our egg, eggplant real quick. A nice rough chop. And again, you don't have to be real fancy with it because again, we're not we're going to be putting all this in a food processor in a minute. Now, that olive oil that I told you about, here's the olive oil, the rest of it, and we're going to pour that into this uh, saute pan. So I use this this okay, so there's about three tablespoons of olive oil in there. And we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go now and sear all that in the olive oil. Okay, saute that for five minutes. All right. And I always when I'm sautéing, I always like to throw a little salt and pepper into my into my sautés because you want to start right from the beginning. All right. All right. Now, for the meatballs, we're going to add back in now, we're going to stir in our other our liquid ingredients, and we're going to put in, so here I have a can of the good old-fashioned Thanksgiving favorite, especially with the children out there, good old-fashioned Ocean Spray Cranberry Gel. That's puppies going right in. Ah, oh, listen to that. All right? Then, we're throwing in one jar, one 12 ounce jar of Heinz chili sauce. Okay, got that. Then we have a quarter of a cup of orange marmalade. Orange marmalade's going in. And as you can see, we're mixing the whole thing up. All right, orange marmalade is in. Great. Next, we are putting in, uh, we're gonna put in about a quarter of a cup of water. Quarter of a cup of water. And we're going to put in two teaspoons of 
two teaspoons of soy sauce. One, two, and two tablespoons of red wine vinegar. Can you tell this has some flavor, guys? Uh, that's it. All right, there's one tablespoon, two tablespoons. All right, we got that in. And then about a teaspoon of red dried red pepper flakes. I have some great dried red pepper flakes that some friends of mine that are the most amazing growers uh, gave me. Uh, so so these, these are actually from last year and they still pack a punch. So I'm just going to, these are really super hot. So we're going to just throw a little bit of that in there. Okay. Now we're going to, we're going to uh, mix all this up. All, and we're going to throw them right back into our sauce. And then we're literally going to bring that up to a simmer. And you're going to let those simmer now for about five, ten minutes. That's it. Now let's right. go back to our red pepper sauce. So we got our red, we've got our red pepper and our eggplant done. Now we're going to bring it over and I'm going to throw it into our, we're going to put it into a food processor, right, just like this. Just like that. A garlic. Okay, two cloves of garlic. Cho uh, chopped up. All right, we're going to add in about a tablespoon or so of chopped cilantro. Okay. We're going to add in a half a teaspoon of paprika. Now, this is our favorite paprika. This is a very a Hungarian paprika that we like. It's kind of got some heat to it. So we're going to add that in there. And then we're going to add the juice and the and the zest of one lemon, all right? Let's throw in a little salt and pepper. Uh, let's grab a little more salt and pepper. So. All right, and then we're gonna pulse it until it's done. Now, the one thing. What's that? I have to sneeze. Oh, <laughs> camera lady needs to sneeze. And then you could serve it with some veggies. I've got some rainbow carrot, maybe carrots here. I got some bread. So there's our, there is our dip. Uh, this is a really nice dip too. I'll tell you, you just, it's got some great flavor. Wow, the sweetness, really nice. The eggplant, and you're getting the heat too at the same time. All right, and then our baked brie isn't quite done yet. But it is here in television land, and so what I have here is what the baked brie looks like when it's done, and uh, just like this, and we're going to just put them, you can just take your meatballs out and put them on a, on a plate, just like that. It's a little different, a little cranberry in it, a little Thanksgiving-ish, you got you covered. I got more in there, I think. Maybe not. Well, I'm going to put more in. Anyways, let's uh, let's put all the food out on the table so everybody can see what we're eating. So we have our meatballs. We have our baked brie that I've already broke it into. All right, and then we have our our eggplant and red pepper dip. Right here. All right. Now, all right. I think that is enough for today. Uh, of course, I'll be back next Sunday and we'll work on side dishes and desserts for Thanksgiving. But until then, until I see you next Sunday, make sure you stay happy, you stay healthy, and you stay safe. And I'll see you next week on Sunday Dinner with Chef Joe.